Remember Dr. McCoy and Spock? Remember their banter throughout the original Star Trek? Assuming you call that green stuff in your veins blood. The readings are perfectly normal for me, Doctor. Thank you. And as for my anatomy being different from yours, I am delighted. Despite this banter back and forth, we as the audience knew that they were friends. Sure, they constantly butt heads with Spock's logic being a constant source of annoyance for McCoy, but throughout the original series and the movies, we've seen them both worry about the other and even risk their lives for each other. Now, this setup worked in the original series, surely in Next Gen. It does know how to do these things, doesn't it? Data, look at this. Data. You called me Data. <laughs> What's the difference? One is my name. The other is not. <laughs> yeah. When the next generation tried that with Season 2 Chief Medical Officer Dr. Catherine Pulaski and Lieutenant Commander Data, it really fell flat for most of the audience. In fact, many fans said that Pulaski just comes off as mean-spirited and like she was bullying Data. And we all know what befalls people who mistreat Data. This is one of the major reasons people hate Pulaski. In fact, many fans cheered when original CMO Dr. Beverly Crusher came back to the show and Pulaski was never seen again. I admit that even I hated Pulaski for a while. But after going through Season 2 a couple of times, I came to realize that she's actually a pretty decent character. Maybe perhaps mishandled at times, but not a bad character. That's not to say I approve of the way she treated Data, but if you look beyond that, you may find a good character. So today, I'm going to look into Dr. Pulaski and why I came to appreciate her as a character. It's elementary, dear Data. First of all, let's talk about what didn't work for Pulaski. As I've alluded to before, Dr. Pulaski and Data were set up as the new McCoy and Spock. Pulaski has a distrust of Data as a machine in a similar way that Bones was annoyed by Spock's logically Vulcan ways. Data, like Spock, was ruled by logic, though even more so than Spock because, as an android, Data lacks emotion, whereas Spock had emotions that were suppressed by his Vulcan heritage. But the difference between McCoy and Spock and Pulaski and Data is that McCoy and Spock had an understanding. Though Spock was ruled by logic, he could still pick up on the nuances of human behavior, even if he didn't completely understand them. He knew that McCoy was insulting him, and he could participate in banter with McCoy by insulting him back. The insults were mutual in that friendship, so it comes across like two guys in a wrestling match. Sure, the match is pretty rough, but both parties know that they're on equal footing. Data, on the other hand, didn't realize he was being insulted. Unlike Spock, he couldn't pick up on the nuances of human behavior. After all, we've even seen other crew members try to explain stuff to him. We're ever curious, this urge to compete. What's a human response? That inborn craving to gauge your capabilities through conflict. So when Pulaski insults Data, she comes across as the school bully picking on the nerd. And even more so because McCoy at least had a respect for Spock as a person, Pulaski, on the other hand, referred to Data as a machine more than once, implying that he's just a thing, and it makes her come off as mean-spirited. Forgive me again. Your service record says that you are alive. I must accept that. That can be a tough thing for a fan base to swallow, especially when the one being attacked is someone like Data. I mean, who attacks Data? Jerks, that's who. Now, I know all this comes across as being pretty bad and maybe even impossible to overlook. But believe it or not, there are some great qualities in Dr. Pulaski that make her a great character. In some cases, even better than Dr. Crusher. I like how Pulaski was outspoken and was willing to challenge even Picard. Take, for example, the episode Pen Pals. In the beginning of the episode, Riker wanted to give Wesley the responsibility of overseeing planetary mineral surveys. Where everyone else in the room jumped on board, Pulaski was the only one who questioned giving him that big of a responsibility, and quite validly. Even though Wes is bright, he's still a teenager. Okay, sure, Jordy asked if he was ready for that as well, but I see him as being more on the fence where Pulaski took a solid stance. Later in the episode, when the question about helping Data's pen pal Sarjenka comes up, with all the Prime Directive stuff, which 
could be a whole other video. The Prime Directive is not a matter of degrees. It is an absolute. I have a problem with that kind of rigidity. It seems callous and even a little cowardly. Pulaski was one of the strongest supporters for intervening and helping Data's friend. I'm going to come back to this later for another point. Where Riker, Worf, and Picard consider the option of not interfering, you know, Prime Directive and all. Prime Directive is not the Prime Directive. The Prime Directive. Well, it's your Prime Directive, not mine. Pulaski was the one to remind everyone that Data's friend was going to die. When you think about it, she was going up against Picard and Riker, the captain and first officer of the ship. But that didn't deter her from speaking her mind. And as for Worf, I mean, everyone denies him. The other thing I like about Pulaski is how she comes around to accepting Data, even defending him. I think this was the main reason why she was so mean to him in the first place, to show the progression of how she came to accept him. Let's step back into Pen Pals and consider this moment. My emotions are involved. Data's friend is going to die. That means something. To Data. Does that invalidate the emotion? Pulaski not only acknowledged that Data made a friend, which implies that she now sees Data as more than just a machine, but that Data's involvement doesn't change the situation. The emotion of the situation doesn't disappear just because it's Data's friend that's involved. What if it was Riker's friend, or Picard's, or even Worf's? I'm not sure if early Pulaski would have defended Data's interests like that. Pulaski even has a nice moment towards the end of the episode with Data after saving Sarjenka's planet. Did a good thing, Data. But are we doing a good thing now, Doctor? To remember you and this ship would complicate her future. She has to be the person she was born to be. And you'll remember. But Waz, you're only mentioning one episode. Name one other time Dr. Pulaski treated Data like another member of the crew. <sighs> I guess you're right. Peak performance. Second to last appearance by Dr. Pulaski. And to be honest, the last good episode she's in because Shades of Grey was... In the episode's B-plot, Pulaski encourages Data to challenge Alien of the Week Kolrami to a game of Stratagema. Way too many wires. I don't even want to think about the wire management problems. However, Kolrami ends up besting Data, plunging Data into self-doubt. He believes that since he made no mistakes and he was still beaten, that he must be malfunctioning. I am at your disposal for a rematch. Troy tries to talk to him, but... Well, Deanna was never the best counselor, so... Let's send in the Pulaski. Data, enough of this. I'm conducting diagnostics. You may be able to sell Troy that story, but not me. And you're smarting because you were beaten. Well, it happens. I'm concerned about giving the captain unsound advice. I wish I had never maneuvered you into playing that game. I'm sorry. While Dr. Pulaski uses a rougher manner of speaking, it's apparent that she truly wants Data to get out of his funk. It's very similar to how Dr. McCoy would encourage Spock. Pulaski doesn't coddle Data. Heck, she doesn't even buy the explanation he gave Troy. She knows him well enough to approach him this way. And besides that, why should she care if Data is sulking if she just sees him as a machine? Why would she even care if she didn't come to see Data as a fellow officer and not just a machine? This comes at the end of Pulaski's time on the show, and she came a long way from how she treated Data when she first arrived on the Enterprise. Granted, I think she should have come around to Data much sooner than she did, but you can't deny the character development in just the one season she's in. But what about Dr. Crusher? After all, when Pulaski left the show at the end of Season 2, Dr. Crusher came back. Surely there are comparisons. Yes, yes there are. Look, I like Beverly. I ship the crap out of her and Picard. Heck, I'm a strong proponent of the Picard is Wesley's father theory. I wish the writers had written her better. In the episode Symbiosis, she tells Picard that leaving the Anarans to suffer withdrawal symptoms from the Felicium drug is awful, but Picard gives the whole prime directive argument, 
And that's it. Compare that to Pulaski challenging Picard about leaving Sarzenka's planet to its fate. I just wish that Beverly was written with more personality, with more episodes of her standing her ground and fighting for her beliefs. In this respect, Pulaski has what Beverly lacks. Now, I get it, Beverly fit in better with the crew, but I would have loved to have seen Pulaski as a recurring character, if not in Next Gen, then maybe on DS9. I would have loved to have seen the interaction between her and Dr. Bashir. Splint, it's a very ancient concept. That's crazy, that's not practicing medicine. Oh, yes it is, it's a time-honored way to practice medicine with your head and your heart and your hands, so... Jump to it. Can we also talk about Pulaski actually respecting Worf and that she probably wouldn't have tried to guilt him into giving his blood to a Romulan? I get the strong sense she respected Worf more than Beverly ever did. What do you think? What were your thoughts on Dr. Pulaski? Did you love her? Did you hate her? Was her treatment of Data enough to taint the character? Do you agree with my assessment or am I completely missing something? Please leave a comment below and discuss. As always, thanks for watching my video. If you like what you see, give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Tell your friends. Until next time. What did she mean by bust him up?